thank you so much for the uh, organizer inviting me here to talk with you. I found my top shelter called my top my means tomorrow, the new dawn, and tam means the heart, the heart of new dawn of tomorrow. The meaning of the house of new dawn means the house of hope of the new beginning because in 2005 I found many children were abandoned in hospital on the street because of HIV and AIDS and I learned the experience of providing care for people dying with AIDS in Bangalore in India when I was a nurse and also in Thailand when I worked at the hospice and I was surprised to see that so many children and mothers were abandoned at that time, rejected out of fear, stigma, discrimination and so they were considered not part of the family. They were even considered morally unacceptable because their family, the people thought that they committed sin, so they were rejected, even the newborn children with HIV. However, since 2005 until now, more than 16 years working with them, what I discovered is that I learned more from their wisdom rather than I could do something for them. And one of the touching story that I remember. It was around 2006 when I was called by a social worker who worked with street children in the park in Ho Chi Minh City. And that social worker asked me to come to assist and help a lady, a mother, and her child were left abandoned in a corner of the park and she was very sick. And the social worker called me to go over there to look if I could help them. So I didn't know where was she in the park. I arrived and were walking around along the public park. And while we were walking and looking for them, there was a car passed by, a kind of limousine near New World Hotel. Very rich, very beautiful, stopped right in front of me and beside the car, the window slowed down and inside the car, I heard the voice of a lady yell at her daughter. I told you, don't eat these things, it's not good for you. And she threw out from the window a piece of cake, round like this, and that cake, the piece of cake was rolling along the road. So it was about to go to work that piece of cake to put in a trash can and suddenly in front of me the girl around three, three and a half years old run over and pick up the cake and run. So I told her she was, she would eat the dirty things so I chased her to get back to retrieve the cake. However, while following her, she ran toward a lady who was lying and who was in pain. And that little girl handed that piece of cake to her mother. And that was the mother and the child I was looking for. Three years and a half, all of us at that age, what did we do? Maybe we were just asking for food. Maybe we didn't know what to do. We were learning to talk. But how come a little girl like that, and for sure she was hungry because I bought food for her and I buried her mother, and I knew that time she was very hungry. But she was able to give up the food she picked up but give to her mother who was dying. And that touched me to my heart until now, I couldn't forget 
than insulin. So today I want to share with you a few thoughts about this wisdom. Many people think that wisdom means you have something to tell to others what to do. Wisdom means you have something that others can learn from you. Yes, that's right, but correct. But many of us know that many people know a lot of things but never do anything for anyone. Wisdom for me is the capacity to love. And the real love is the capacity to give oneself for someone. And that little girl, three years and a half, and she's now studying in the high school, staying in our shelter, she had that wisdom that many of our children or our youth today could not have it. The capacity to realize, to be aware of the need of someone and let go of my own need for that person to bring life to him. And how do we have that? I think and I believe each of us has that wisdom built innate in our heart. And that will reawaken in us when our mother, our father, our parent touch us, did something for us when we grow up, when we just cry out the cry, the voice of human life when we were born. We were secure, we were embraced, and we realized that this world is worth trusting. However, what is so unfortunate for our society today at large, we are living in a deep, polarized society. Either good or bad, either black or white, Either you are with me or not with me. Either you are far left or right. And so if you have something that worth my sharing, my being with you, I accept you. If you don't have that, if you don't have that which I like, I love, I don't need you. And so this is why so many children, unfortunately, in our society today, even in Vietnam, until today, children will be abandoned, left abandoned in the, social, in the hospital, in the trash can, on the street, because many were thinking that they were not right for them. They wouldn't be bringing something good for them. They don't have anything that they can be proud of, or be some even feel ashamed to have them, to so reject them. And I think many of us grew up with the experience that if you don't do something good or to prove that you are good, you will not be accepted. So something as failure, as mistake, and error, we will not be accepted. So we try to cover, to make up, to live in the mass of our own insecurity. Wisdom really is the awareness of myself, of each of us have our own strength and weakness. We all have it. We all have limitation, but we all have our strength. But further than that, not only being aware, but accepting. Awareness has to come with acceptance. But acceptance is not enough for me in my own tradition, in my own learning from different fields, in my service to the people who are dying. The acceptance goes further with self-giving. We have our self-awareness is what 
we are asking each of us today. We try to raise our self-awareness today. But further than that, from awareness, we must accept who we are. Even accept the bad things we have in us. But only when accept, with acceptance, that's something that we feel ashamed of, or we don't want to accept from the beginning. We cease to control us. And from that acceptance, we can share ourselves to others. Further than that, oneness, as our organizer wants to tell to us today, comes from the wisdom that awareness of who we are is not enough, but awareness of how we, each and every one of us, is connected to each other. We, myself, is not alone. We are connected. And that, that connection will tell us how important it is for us to recognize the dignity, the presence of others in front of us, and reach out to others. The COVID-19 makes us realize this important aspect of our life. We are interconnected. How terrible it is when we are being isolated, when our friends, our relatives that used to be close to us, now we cannot see. But fortunately, or unfortunately, the recent typhoon storm in the center of Vietnam and also the outbreak of COVID proved to us something so important that we still have the capacity to recognize the need to share and to reach out. We can regain our oneness of humanity. We can regain our oneness with nature, with creation. We can regain our oneness with the suffering and pain of others and recognize that we can share that we can handle that together. So, I would like to end this little talk today and invite each of you to rethink the moment that we are touched with love unconditionally by someone in our life. Aware of being touched, telling us that we are connected we are loved, we are important because of someone. And so that we can live with someone. And we can even die for someone we love. Thank you for your listening.